So most people think when you use Photoshop, there's just all these amazing tricks inside of the program. And there are, and there's different cool things that you can use to blend and make stuff work. But one of the most important and most overlooked aspects is taking an image in the correct way to make the whole process easier. So what does that mean? Right now on this image, we have a horizon line down here on this bottom third, and we have two thirds here. And this was taken with a wide angle lens. So when you're taking a picture of a sky to blend into this image, you wanna take it with a wide angle lens and the perspective or the horizon line sort of in the same spot. This makes it look more realistic and it makes it blend better. I'm gonna give you a quick example of what I mean by that. So we down here, we have this picture of clouds and obviously it looks like somebody was up in an airplane and took this telephoto image of clouds. So I'm gonna take these clouds and we're gonna move it and we're gonna just cover up that sky. We can already see this doesn't look realistic. It looks like these clouds are sitting on top of this field, which is not the way it should look. The clouds kind of have a perspective or a line. They're moving this direction back into here and they're bigger here and they're smaller here. When we turn this image on, it's a much flatter image. And so there is no perspective and there is no horizon line. It's just kind of this weird thing. Like this is a big giant volcano and these clouds are erupting from this little cornfield out in the middle of nowhere. So that's not realistic. One of the aspects when you're taking photos to do this is your focal length and your horizon lines really need to match up. So if you take a picture of with a telephoto lens, even if your horizon line's same, it's gonna look odd because this area is gonna be much flatter and have less depth. So if you're looking for a realistic look, you need to make sure that those two aspects are important into what you're doing. So it's just not randomly taking two images and putting them together. Photoshop doesn't work well like that. And that goes with most of blending in Photoshop. You really need to think about what you're doing and how you're gonna do it ever before you actually do the process. Because one thing, it makes it simpler. You don't wanna spend hours and hours doing this. You just wanna bam, get it done, and you're good to go. If you make it complicated, you could spend hours doing something that could have been really simple if you thought about it beforehand. So today I'm gonna to show you how to blend images or landscapes and clouds and skies inside of Adobe Photoshop. So we're gonna take this image and we are going to drag it over here to this image. I'm gonna hold the shift key, that's going to center this. And bam, it's putting that photo on top of that image. Now to blend these two, I kind of need to see what is going on underneath this photo. So to do that, I'm gonna just lower the opacity. And what I'm trying to look for is my horizon lines. I'm gonna take the move tool and I'm gonna take my horizon line here. I'm gonna to try to match these up. I don't want to go too high or too low. I'm going to match them up. It's not going to be perfect because notice it's going up high here and up high here. That's okay. I'd rather have it below than above. I'm going to take my opacity and bring it back up and we're good to go. So what we are going to do is take the clouds from this image and put it into this image. Now, this is just really need to be done. No, the clouds are fine in this. What we're just doing this is a tutorial and example of how to do the process. So I'm gonna turn this back on. So the process we are gonna use is a gradient. And this is great when you have a simple horizon line and you just wanna put clouds in between. You're gonna come up here, this is your gradient. You wanna make sure black to white or black to translucent and all these different choices are up here. We're just gonna click on this top one and you wanna make sure this gradient is selected. The way a gradient works is you'll see this when I do it, you're gonna just make a point, you're gonna drag, it's gonna create a mask over here and you can see it's got a nice soft gradient. I'm gonna hit Command Z. If I do a little short line, it's got a soft gradient. If I do a long line, it's gonna have a long gradient. So that's kind of how the gradients work. So to use the gradient, we need to create in this top layer what's a mask and we're gonna create an inverted mask holding Alt Option and then clicking the mask button. So this is giving us a mask, it's hiding this area. 
So what we're gonna do then is take this gradient and then draw it in. I don't wanna go too low or too high. I'm gonna go right down to the horizon line and let go and bam, just like that, it's creating this mask and it is blending this sky with the sky below it. So we can see this is how it was and this is how it is. Actually, if you look at these clouds, they're a little more even and better balanced. Here, there's a lot of clouds over here, but not a lot of stuff over here. Now we could easily clone or copy or do stuff like this, but this is balancing these two clouds. If we wanted to come up here and do a longer transition, I can make a longer line. And what that's gonna do is give us a little bit more of the clouds here, but you can see there's some weird ghosting going on. and I don't want that. So I'm just gonna make a short transition and bam, just like that, we're good to go. Now, uh, right here on these edges, it's we're getting a little bleed over because I went all the way down to the bottom. That's not a big deal. All you need to do is grab your brush tool in the color black, and you most likely would want to make a pretty small brush, and we can just paint that out of that area. Now, normally I would zoom in here and be more specific, so I'm a little bit more accurate, but this is just a tutorial, so we're just going to go with that. And that looks pretty good. Here's the first image and we've blended two different skies using a gradient. So here's a more realistic image. Now this isn't toned very well. It's a little bit overexposed and blown out, but notice we don't have a sky here. So what happened if the couple said, oh man, this is a great photo, but I wish there was a sky in the background. Well, that's no big deal. We can put a sky in the background. So the first thing I would do, if I didn't take this photo, I'm gonna hit Command, Alt, Option, Shift, I. That brings up your camera data. Usually in an image, it's gonna have your camera data and tell you how it's shot, but for some reason, this doesn't have it. So this, if you weren't sure what focal length this was, that's gonna be one way you can go in there and check to see what the focal length was in this camera. I can tell this is sort of like a 50 or a 70 or something like that. It's not super telephoto, it's not super wide. What we're gonna do is come in here and see if we can find a sky that we think will work. Here's a little bit more of a telephoto image. Let's see, go back to the couple here. Well, since they're both C scenes, let's give it a try and see what it looks like. So we're gonna drag this image over here to couple. I'm gonna hold down shift once again, and that's gonna place it on the center. I'm gonna lower that opacity so we can see the horizon lines below it. And I'm gonna take this horizon line and move it up so that they match. Pretty good, we're gonna take this and bump it over to 100%. I'm gonna hold the Alt Option key, make an inverted mask. It's hiding it, and then once again, we're gonna use the gradient. Now we've got an issue here, we've got people up in here, and when we do this gradient, as I will, whoops, do real quick, it's gonna overlap those people and put them in the sky. So there's a couple of different ways to do this. I can make a selection around them, or I can come in with my brush afterwards and paint them out so the sky doesn't go over top of them. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. Once again, we're gonna take this gradient. I can make it a little bit stronger or a little bit lighter. We're gonna go right down to that point and blend those two images and that looks pretty good to me. And then what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna do this quickly so we don't waste too much time, is zoom in the couple and then you would just simply take your brush, take the color black. You're gonna to have to be very accurate. You do not want a strong feather. And I'm just gonna do this really crudely and fast so we can see what it looks like. I'm just gonna come in here and paint this out of the couple. It's okay, I messed up there and went a little too far. It is not a big deal. Because remember, when you go too far, you can hit the letter X, paint color back in, and we're good. I'm not gonna go the whole way down. And we'll just say that that looks perfect and that looks good, which it does not. And then bam, just like that, you've got a sky in the background. And once you kind of zoom in and really clean this up, you can get it to look really realistic. So we can say it was like this, and then we've put this on here. I can also lower the opacity of this. Now what lowering the opacity is doing, it's kind of getting some of that color away. It, this is a really strong, vibrant, and this is a washed out photo. So we can just lower that a little bit, that's gonna help. I can also 
make a adjustment to this. So we're gonna go into hue saturation in this, and I'm actually just gonna suck a lot of the color out of this. Now, the issue with what I just did is I made this adjustment and it's sucking the color out of this image and this image. So what we're gonna do is create a clipping mask. I'm gonna go in between this layer and this layer, and you can see I get that arrow pointing down with the box. I'm holding the Alt Option key when I go in between the layers, and then I'm gonna click. And then this means I'm clipping to that. So that means that this adjustment is only being applied here, not to here. Hopefully this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.